Hi everyone, welcome. My name is Tom Turner. I'm the lead pastor at Praise Family Church in Mobile, Alabama, and I am thrilled and excited that you're joining us for this very special program. We have something that we really think a lot about, and that is the church and how we relate to it. In fact, over the next few weeks, we're gonna be talking about the family business, and it's just how we relate as people of God in the church where God's planned us. We hope you'll be joining us every time. And in fact, if you'd like more information about Praise Family Church, Stay tuned at the end and we'll tell you more about how you can be more connected in what we're doing. church everybody we're glad you're here sure is glad to be I'm glad to be back I know my wife and I are sure thrilled this seems like forever since we were here maybe not to you maybe it seems we went too fast I don't know but but we're glad to be back we love you guys we appreciate everybody we have such great you know just an incredible team I was telling this morning when we were praying with the first service team um, how much I just really appreciate how many people work so hard to make Sunday happen, to make Wednesdays happen. Uh, there was a time not that long ago when I had to be involved in everything that was happening. I mean, I had to open the church, turn on the sound system. I used to lead worship as well. Um, had to make sure the classrooms were ready. Had to make sure all the equipment and everything was in there. And as we grew and people began to take, uh, take their place, you know, I mean, things happen without me. I don't even have to be here. God's good. Come on. God's good. Amen. Hey, before we get started in the message, you can go ahead and turn to Psalms 92. We'll be there in just a minute. I'm not starting yet, just for the timer and all that stuff. Yeah, guys, I don't know what that's about. 17 minutes. No, that ain't going to work. We've got to redo that. Uh, but <laughs> that's just in-house stuff. Um, but I wanted to mention, this Wednesday night, if you don't usually come on Wednesdays, you need to check Wednesdays out. It's an important part of our week, and I know it seems like a, an extra night and all that, but we have a great night. We call it family night. And we have all kinds of things going on Wednesday nights for our kids and our youth. But here's what we're going to do for the next two months. For May and June, we're going to do something we've never done. I'm going to host the guys for PFC Men every Wednesday night. And my wife, Pam, is going to have something for the ladies, of PFC ladies. And it's going to, she's got stuff planned. we got special things. This week, guys, we're doing burgers with the bros. We're going to do it on Wednesday night instead of a Friday night. So we've got free burgers. you got some stuff planned. I don't know what all they got. they got stuff. Uh, some special surprise. I know you got some great things planned. So I'm sorry. Oh, she said they're going to be sniffing perfume and looking at flowers. If you've never been here, you, I always say that. So, that she had, no, they got some great things planned. She's got some things for you. And so if you've never been, this is a great time to get plugged in. In fact, that's what we're talking about this month as we talk about Club JC. Uh, Club JC. That's, boy, I just dated myself. That used to be our junior high ministry like 117 years ago. <laughs> Woo! Club PFC. And today I want to talk about our club. All right, and so I want us to, to, to get into this, and we're going to talk about the importance of the church and why we have a church and why God plugs us into a church. That's really what this is about this month. So I want us to start by reading the scripture I already mentioned, Psalm 92, verses 12 and 13. All right, if you don't have a Bible, you'll sit on the wall, but I encourage you to bring a Bible, whether it's electronic or you got an actual, you know, they, they do have it in old-fashioned book form. Some of you didn't know that. They have those. Uh, chapter 92. Psalm 92, verse 12 says, The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Let's pray. Father, we need to hear from you today. We open our lives to you, Lord. We, just, we set aside every distraction. We'll not be uh, turned aside. We won't let anything catch our attention, Lord. We want to be focused on you and what you're saying. Let our ears and our, we open our hearts that you can find good ground in our hearts that you can change us. Let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, my rock and my redeemer. We put hell on notice. You cannot have this time. This is God's time. We thank you for it. And everybody agrees with that. Say a great big amen. 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 So one of the things I've known, but I really, um, it just was really reinforced, and reinforced in a new way, is how important it is to be here. And I, for the last three weeks, I was so thankful that we could look in on service. So the last three Sundays, that's the longest I've ever taken, the longest Pam and I have ever been gone, 23 days we were out of the country. A uh, long time. And, uh, and, and so the first Sunday we were gone, 
we were in Brazil. The second Sunday we were gone, we were crossing the Atlantic. Last Sunday, we were in Portugal. So we literally been around the world in the last three weeks and got to see the service from different places. And I appreciate that. I really am glad we have that. I'm glad for the, you know, the advent of the technology that, that right now people are watching us live. Later on, they'll be watching a recorded version of it or maybe even watching on Kingdom Builders television. I'm thankful for that. So don't get what I'm about to say. I don't want people to think I don't appreciate it. But I want to tell you something I'm more aware of than ever. I really begin to feel like, you know what? I feel like I'm on the outside looking in. I was, it was great. I mean, I saw y'all praying for people. I thought, man, I wish I was right in the middle of that. It was powerful. I thank God for what he did for the last three weeks. The guys did fantastic. Pastor Jeremy and Pastor Brandon, they brought the word. There's no doubt about it. But I'm going to tell you, I felt like an observer. And so I began to realize that there's a reason that God calls us to the church. I love being able to watch. Don't get me wrong. If you're watching online, thank God for that. But I just want you to understand some stuff. Here, and I'm thrilled about it. But listen to me. It's not as good as being here. Come on now. How many remember COVID? Come on. We were doing that. That's when we really, we were always doing live streaming, but it really took off. Some people were watching every week. We had many, many thousands of people watching during that time, but I can't tell you how many messages I got. So when, when can we please be in the same room again? Because there's just something special about gathering with God's people, right? And so don't tune me out. I want you to understand it, it, we have something very, very special here. In fact, in some ways, People might even accuse us of having this exclusive club because they'll say, well, that church, they're just so stuck up. They're like a clique. And, you know, in a kind of way we can be, but let me explain the good side of that. We don't ever want to be where people can't fit in. But I want you to understand something, and I want you to write this down, okay? So we're talking about Club PFC, so you'll get it. Stay with me. Club PFC isn't for everybody. I knew that would happen. But wait, there's more. It's not for everybody. But it is for anybody. You know, God himself, the Bible says, isn't willing that any should perish. But not everybody. is going to, the, the, the way to hell is too wide. Narrow is the way to people, but you choose, right? And so even though anybody's welcome, not everybody's coming here. And there's some great churches. They don't have to come here, as we always say. They're great churches. But I believe it has to be for anybody. You know, I want you to understand something. The culture today is often really content on and kind of being observers, right? Uh, we can watch things from afar. We can, we can just form opinions. We can pick and choose what we want to see. A lot of people are doing that. That's what they call the church. In fact, someone I know very well uh, during COVID, they said, you know, one thing I like about this, I was able to attend 17 churches today. Well, they didn't attend 17 churches. They looked in on 17 different services. And if that's all you have, again, I'm thankful. We, you know, we're, we're in prisons and nursing homes, places people can't uh, shut in. I thank God for that. But can I tell you, there's something really exclusive about the body of Christ joining together. And something happens when we're in here together that you can't replicate anywhere else. Can somebody say amen? And so I'm thankful those things happen. But here's what happens. By watching from afar, you can observe, you can make opinions, you can criticize, critique, you know, decide certain things. All those things can happen. And the devil does not care if you do that. He doesn't care if you watch 18 services as long as you don't engage with them. So I want you to write this down. Here's the truth. There is no true transformation without engagement. But somebody said, well, I don't believe that. Well, how did you get saved? Can you be saved without engaging? No, you have to what? Believe in your heart and what? Confess with your mouth. Nobody got saved by osmosis. Some of you have incredible parents or grandparents, an aunt or uncle or somebody that's godly. You had a great church upbringing, but you're not saved because you had a great church upbringing. You, you're saved because you made a decision to make Jesus Lord of your life. We all have to do that individually. Same way with church. We can watch it. We can observe it. We can, we can visit different ones, but we never really get the benefit of it until we fully engage in it. That's what the Bible says, and that's what I want to talk about today. So I want to go back to the, the scripture that I read at the beginning, Psalm 92, but I want to read it from the Amplified because it really spells out from the original Hebrew the tense and the plural and singular. I'll explain that in just a minute. Look what it says, Psalm 92, verses 12 and 13. The righteous, and that, by the way, is a plural, the righteous, will flourish like the date palm. That's a singular. Long-lived, upright, and useful. They, plural, will grow like a cedar, singular. 
in Lebanon, majestic and stable, planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the courts of our God. Now, I'm reading that, and I've known this, and I knew the principle, but it never hit me until I was studying over the last few weeks getting ready for this series. That, that verse came alive to me in a way I had never noticed before because I thought he's switching, the psalmist is switching between singular and plural, and everybody have any, any education on English, at least second or third grade or higher, anybody? Uh, they probably taught you you don't mix plural and singulars. You, you know, that's how you mess up the language. We do it all the time. We're not supposed to, Right. Well, he's doing that, so there's got to be a reason for it. And immediately, my heart went to a scripture that I know where Paul is talking about the church in the New Testament. Now, this is an Old Testament reference, and I believe it's prophetic. I don't think it's an accident. There's nothing accidental in scripture. I think the Holy Spirit used that to reinforce something that later on we see. So I want you to now turn to Ephesians, all right, all the way back to the book of Ephesians, where Paul is talking about the church that Jesus planted. Jesus, who came up with the idea of church, not men. People say, I don't believe in organized religion. Well, I understand that religion can be a problem, but Jesus thought of church, all right? And it says beginning in chapter 4 of Ephesians, beginning with verse 11, and it's talking about Jesus. It says, he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. And he tells us why. For the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So he's getting into what we're supposed to do, and we'll get into some of this more as we go through this series this month. Verse 13 says, till we all come, that would be what tense or what would be a plural, right? Not tense, but the right, so not singular, it's plural. Till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. And then look what he does. To a perfect man. So he goes from plural to singular again. To the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. He says something very important about confusion and things in people's lives when they're not plugged into the church. He's telling some things about that. We'll get to that later. By the trickery of man and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things unto him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. So Paul's telling us something very important and strategic about the body of Christ, that, that our growth is said about how it works and how Jesus established this church and why he did it, just as the psalmist did. Just like he said, Paul says that if we want to have this long-lived, upright, and useful, majestic, and stable life, that that's a result of us being planted together in the house of God. That's what he's saying. Then he said, that's what happens with the church. Stay with me. He says, till we, till we all come, that's all of us, that's, that's plural, to what? A perfect man. Isn't that what he says? Anybody ever heard the phrase, nobody's perfect? Usually, my experience has been what we say when we mess up. I've said to my wife more than once, well, baby, nobody's perfect. In other words, I blew it, but my excuse is nobody's perfect. That's normally how we use it, right? But that's not what the Bible's telling us. He's saying we can be perfect. Well, how is that possible? That sound, does not, not sound impossible to anybody besides me. Okay, well, go to Matthew. This will really confuse you. Matthew, thank God we're going to get some clarity. Okay, stay with me. Matthew, I want to read it. So you don't think I'm just quoting something out of, out of turn. Matthew, a very important scripture, Matthew chapter 5. Are you, are you there? You get there? Go to Matthew chapter 5, verse 48. Look what it says. Therefore, you shall be perfect just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Well, forget that. Any perfect people here? In fact, I know a lot of churches use that phrase, no perfect people allowed, because none of us are perfect. But Jesus says, but you need to be perfect. So we go, and the enemy gets us so confused, and we think, well, I'm not perfect. And we go see perfect people at church, and we realize we don't measure up, because they look perfect to us, even though we don't know what's going on in the background, right? I was talking to one of the fathers that's got several kids, and they're just an incredible family. And I was talking to him after service, and I man, you're such a blessing. You and the way you've raised your kids, he goes, man, people don't see behind the scenes, Right? I mean, you know what I'm talking about. They didn't see you lock the kids in the trunk so you could get to church without fighting this morning. They didn't see that, right? 
But Jesus is saying, you, okay, you're, 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 you're just striving for perfection. So you come to church and somebody starts talking. You go, I can't do that. I mean, I blew it this week. I cursed at my kids in my heart in the name of Jesus. I didn't do it out loud, right? <laughs> I, I, I made this mistake. I, I, I'm still struggling with lust. I'm still struggling with these things. And I'm not perfect, so I might as well give up. I might as well quit. And that's exactly what the enemy wants you to do. He wants you to quit. And give up. But if, can I tell you something? If, if God calls us to something and Jesus commands something, not only does he expect us to do it, but he says, I'll give you the grace and the power to do it. You've heard, has anybody ever heard what they say? Grace is, grace is what? God's unmerited favors. You don't deserve it. That's true. But you know what? The grace, the root of that word grace is the, char- is the word charis, which we get the charismatic gifts. It means power. So it's not just some uh, lovey-dovey little thing that God does. He gives you some power in your life so you can do the things. He's giving you grace. He's giving you power so you can do these things. And he says, here's the key to it. It sounds impossible, but if you'll follow the principles that I'm laying out in Psalms and Ephesians, he says, this can happen. It's not just something that might happen. This is something that God says will happen if you'll trust God to do it. Can somebody say amen? amen. Now, would you go to John now? Okay, now I know we've done a lot of scriptures. I want to go to the book of John, all right? John chapter 17. And Jesus, he goes, now, if it's not confusing enough, Jesus goes, gets more fully into that and right here in John when he's talking. He's interceding for the church because he says, I'm praying for all the people now, but all those who will come to know you because of the word they're teaching. So he's talking about the first disciples, and now here we are a couple thousand years later, and we're the results of that. So he's praying for all of us. So look what he says beginning in verse 20 of chapter 17. Not for these only do I pray, but for those also who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one... Even as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. When the church is in unity, it says the world will understand and follow. The glory which you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one, even as we are one. What do you think the theme is here? Okay, you you see it developed. But look at what he says. I in them and you in me, that they may be, what's the word before that? They may be what? Perfected. Okay, that just threw me off. Because we just said nobody's perfect. That's what we always heard. But he said, they may be perfect, what? What does he say? Into? There it is again. There guess where one goes. That the world may know that you have sent me and love them even as you loved me. Now, do you understand something here? Jesus is saying something really important. He's saying, what I'm calling you to do. Now, he says in Matthew 5, be perfect. But then in John 17, he gives us a glimpse into what he's talking about. Paul talked about it. He's saying, yeah, I expect perfection, but your perfection doesn't come in your own abilities. Your perfection doesn't come in your individuality. Your perfection comes as you plug into your place in the church, and together we make up the body of Christ. And all the things that happen on every given Sunday and through the ministry of the week, it's not happening because one person's got it all together, but because together we're taking up the slack for each other, and God's bringing perfection into this house as we walk in unity. That's what he's saying. That, yeah, that's good. That's good, right? It's good to know. So I want you to write this down. Jesus never intended for his church to simply be watched from afar. That's, and we live in a time when people do that, right? I, I couldn't tell you how many different people have, are aware or have seen maybe a second of our service sometime. Sometimes we get messages from the other side of the world that people have seen things. God's touched them, and we've gotten criticism from around the world, too. So, you know, it's always, always equals out. And again, I'll say it again, if you're watching, I'm not upset that you're watching, but I'm just telling you, if you don't have a church in your town, we'll pray God will bring one there. Maybe we need to plant one there sometime, right? Because you need to be in the house. You need to be in connection with the body of Christ. You need to grow. That's why we we supply ministry for kids so they can be connected because kids can't connect the same way adults connect. And you you sure don't connect the way we do. So we do that because we need to all have this part that we get to play because as we fulfill God's purposes, we begin to become a perfect person, not us individually. We fulfill the work of the body of Christ. All right, now, so what does it mean to be a church? Write this down. We are the church when we engage together in worship, in doctrine, and in doing ministry. Now, you say, well, where do you get that from? Well, actually... The laws of this country and this nation tell us what makes up a church. And that's some of the things it says you have to do to be a church. But Jesus said it a long time ago. This is what makes you a church. Not because you go to church, because you like it better. You check it out. Look, 
people check things out. But I'm telling you, you, if you're looking for a church today, you find that place, you get plugged in. Because what God wants to do in your life is much more than just observe from afar. He's got a plan and a purpose for you. And this exclusive club is for you if you're willing to do your part. Somebody needs to say a great big amen. amen. One more thing, then we'll move on. The transforming power of Jesus Christ is hands-on. We cannot receive it by observation only. I thank God that I've watched things happen and God spoke to my heart. And I've seen and heard teaching from people that helped me. But I realized the real growth in my life and the strength in my life has been in relationship to the rest of the body. What has happened is I fulfill my role. And see, I fulfilled a lot of roles. I said earlier, you know, uh, I'm, I'm appreciative for all the different roles that different people have. And, but I've done them all. I've been a volunteer. You know, I was a volunteer Army style. You, anybody know what an Army style volunteer is? The, the general said, you're going to do it. You know, the general was in my life. My dad. My dad was the pastor. He said, this is what you're going to do, son, for the glory of God. And you're going to be happy. Yes, sir. Right? But I was also a volunteer because I wanted to be. Then I, then I became, uh, became a volunteer leader. And I became, I, I worked for many years as a pastor and a leader in the church. And I wasn't really getting paid. And, and I've, done, I've done all the different levels. And every single time, one of the things I can look back and say is every time, whatever my role was, it helped build me. It helped me to grow into who God wanted me to be. But it wasn't because of me. It was because who I was surrounded with and what we did together. That's why what this church does, I can't pat myself on the back. Can't pat Pastor Brandon, Pastor Jeremy. It's not us. Some of this stuff's been going on way before we got here. And if Jesus tarries, it's going to keep going. It's about the body of Christ fulfilling what God's called us to do in the place he put us. I'm telling you, God has called us to this. Satan's greatest tool, I believe, against humanity just might be this disengagement that we're seeing today. If you, You've seen the stats. You've seen the numbers, how people don't, don't engage so he doesn't care, like I said, if you watch, if you observe, even if you come, as long as he can get you not to engage. Because the perfection God has for you is in your, your engagement and doing your part in the body of Christ. We all come to the unity of faith, that working together, we become a perfect. Now, we're doing what the church has called us to do. And can I tell you, the more we grow, the better we all become. Because we can do more, right? Some of you are doing six or seven jobs. You used to do 12 here at the church. You know, you know, and we're getting you down to one or two. That's, a, that's, a, that's great because more people are joining us, right? It's important that we do that. So, so we participate in the work of the ministry together. That's what God's called us to do. That, that's where this transformation takes place. So let me tell you something. You're invited. Let me make this personal. You are invited to be part of this, this exclusive club. Every person here, you're invited to be part of Club J, uh, PFC. I almost said it again. Club PFC. And Jesus does invite you to come just like you are. Exactly the way you are. You don't have to make any changes with all your natural imperfections. But then as you plug in and you begin to engage and fulfill your part of the ministry, you, you, you belong uh, in, in for God to, to begin to work in you. And then that begins the part of perfecting you. Can, you. can I tell you that many of the things I struggle with in the flesh, I was able to overcome not just because I fought this battle along, but because I was with the body of Christ. And I began to grow with some things of Christ. Things I used to struggle with became less of a struggle because I was walking with other men and women and young people in the things of God. And God began to do some things in me that we were able to do together. That's how he does his work. Can somebody say a great big amen to that? Everything the enemy wants to do in your life starts with getting you disconnected from the church. It might start with them, you, you just know they don't care about you. You hear that voice. Or this is too big. I've had people come by and say, ah, the church is too big. I'm looking for a little church. He wants to get you disjointed. Because everybody knows that any part of the body that's not joined can't function. So what he does is when you're going through things in your flesh, the first thing you want to do, you've heard us say this often, you're laying in bed on Sunday morning, this just the hell has come against you, it's just been a terrible day, and you're convinced nobody cares about you, the first thing you want to do is pull your covers over your head and say, I'm staying in bed, I'm not going. That's the worst thing you can do. That's when we need to be together more than ever. Because somebody else might not be going through what I'm going through, but they've been through it. And later on when I get through it, I can help somebody else get through it. That's what we do together, Huh? So that's what God's called you to do. That's what he's called us and told us he wants us to do. Look, not only do you need Club PFC, but Club PFC needs you. 
for us to do what God's called us to do, to the great big vision. It doesn't matter how big the vision is God gives to me as the pastor. It takes a lot more people. The bigger the vision, the more people it takes to fulfill it. Amen? So that's what we're looking for is people to come in. And, and I remember, you know, I used to play sports, and I loved all sports. I played some basketball, some football, but baseball was my main sport. And I love baseball. In fact, I, I always thought I'd at least play it in college. And, you know, like everybody thought maybe one day you'd be in the pros and all that kind of stuff that people think that's probably not reality. But when I finally hung up my cleats, how many played sports? Any baseball players here? How many hung up your cleats? You know what that means, right? It means you know you can't do it anymore. So when I hung up my cleats, I can tell you, for a little while I struggled. I was a youth pastor, and I had to go to ball games. And I'd go watch kids play, and it was tough. I had a hard time. because I get, And it wasn't because I regretted going to the ministry, but I missed it. Because it wasn't the same. Watching somebody else play. I mean, I even I coached for a while. And that's pretty good. Still not the same. Right? I want you to write this down. Don't let the enemy fool you into believing that watching from the stands is the same as being in the game. It's not. If you're watching from the stands today and you're thinking about checking out the church, come on. Maybe you're here today. You're looking for a church home. I'm telling you, join us. We have so much to do. We have not even scratched the surface of what God has for us. And I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm over 40 now. And it's going to be... Why are you laughing? I'm way over 40. So, that's just a, so I'm, I'm, I'll turn 64 in June. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Somebody, somebody said, I wish I was still 64. But anyway, but, so I, I recognize that I definitely, for whatever, however long I got to do this, I got less time than I've already had. In February, we'll be here 30 years. And I know there's some things God wants us to do, but I'm aware that I cannot do more than I'm doing. But more people can. There's somebody out there that the devil's trying to get you not to engage, trying to get you not to plug in, trying to get you not to believe that you can do anything for God. And you may be the linchpin for that one area where God wants to do something like he's never done. Because here's the deal. The enemy specializes in com convincing people that being part of the church just takes too much time. That's too much. He'll say, hey, you already got so much to do. Look at all the things you're involved in, and it's just another thing. Can I tell you, your church is not just another thing on your calendar. Your church is your lifeline for the kingdom of God. You need your church, right? So he's going to tell you, look, they're just demanding too much. You're just too much time. Look at your schedule. You can't do this. And let me tell you something we've said many times, just bears repeating. The devil will never show us the facts. I will always show us the facts. He'll always show us the facts, but he'll never tell us the truth. He'll show you your calendar, but he won't show you how God can redeem your time and the things that really matter. It's amazing to me how many things I did in my life that I thought was so important and so magnificent, and they pale in comparison, and the things I never even had to do, if I would have just stuck with what God called me to do, I would have been so much better off. Because can I tell you, I've never had as much joy and happiness as when I'm plugged in with the body of Christ. I'm telling you, it was great to go on vacation, but it's way better to be back. I'm glad I'm in this house today. Somebody, come on. Now, he, he's going to let you see how full your schedule is, the devil will, but he's not going to show you the benefit, huh? He won't let us see what he knows better than anyone else. It's something Jesus said. And usually this scripture is not um, used in this context, but I want to read from Matthew chapter 11. Jesus is talking, and listen to what he says in light of what we're talking about. Verse 28, chapter 11 of Matthew says, Come to me. All of you who are tired and have heavy loads, and I will give you rest. Accept my teachings and learn from me because I am gentle and humble in spirit, and you will find rest for your lives. But listen to this. Are you ready? The devil's trying to tell you they're putting too much on you. He says, the burden that I ask you to accept is easy. The load I give you to carry is light. So what he's calling us to, the enemy's going to convince you that you that's too much. He's talking about all the things you're going to give up, right? I used to talk to teenagers. But if, if I do that, I'm going to give up stuff. I'm like, what are you going to have to give up? Hangovers? Heartache? Rejection. Hmm? Rejection? Failure? Jesus offers everything we need. And he says, you can find it in the context of your church. He, he, wants, he wants to get you to, the devil wants to get you to pull away. He wants to get you to pull away. And disengage. But Jesus is just the opposite. 
He's calling you today. He's saying to all of us, come on, go all in. You've been on the fringe watching. It's time to get in the game. It's time to put on your big boy pants spiritually and step up. There are things you can do that nobody else can do. Well, I don't know what I have. I promise you, whatever God has in you, it will come forth when you begin to serve. You can't believe how many people have come here and they had some gift. And because we didn't have an opening, they started serving somewhere else. And all of a sudden, we've had people who said, I'll never work with kids that are some of our best teachers now. You never know what God's going to do. And don't that, that might have scared somebody. We're not going to make you teach kids. Don't worry. But God's got a place for you. I'll tell you something. It's all about saying, God, just put me where you want me. Because in that moment, when we begin to work together, then all of a sudden I get the fullness. This is where fullness comes from. Jesus, I came to give you life, life more abundantly. I'm going to submit to you this morning. It happens in context of your church family. Somebody should have shouted amen right there. Amen? Come on, one last thing. We're going to let the band get us going here. Here's the point. You ready? Jesus plants us in his church for our benefit. I've been to church when I was traveling all over the country and around the world some, especially when I was on a staff of the church. We still do that some, but when I was you know, part of a ministry, we were doing consulting and helping. And one of the things I had to do, I had to pull myself away from feeling like I was the answer for people. Man, that church needs me. That needs help. Until I became realizing that I need the church. I need to be there, not they need me. Because I've learned a long time ago, there's not a single one of us, as much as we think so, that are so expendable that they can't get by without us. The work of Jesus is going to go on. But I'm just inviting you today to say, I want to check this out. First of all, if you've never made Jesus Lord of your life, that's the first step. You've got to be a Christian, right? He plugs you in to the body, but he says, I'll plant you. Remember the psalmist said, when you're planted in the house of the Lord, that's when you flourish. Paul says, when every part does its share, the whole body is able to grow up into a perfect man. Come on, somebody. None of us can do it. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect, but you know what? Together we're being perfected. Come on now. I need you. We need each other. Let's give God praise for that as we stand to our feet. Come on, church. Come on, church. I think one of the things that's going to happen, I think we're going to have a lot of revelation really come alive in us when we get to heaven. And I think so many people are going to get into heaven and realize how much they missed by not being more fully engaged in their church. Come on. I'm telling you, it's the blessing above all us. When we gather with the workers on Sunday morning and pray with them, I'm telling you, I can't tell you how exciting it is. You may not come to church excited, but, but they are ready to go every Sunday morning and every Wednesday night. But can I tell you, we have a lot more things we got to get done. We need you. This is our club, and we're saying, join us. Would you raise your hands right now? I want to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus. By the power of the living God, we just ask you to move. If there's someone here who doesn't know you, Jesus, would you just tug on their heart? Would you show yourself strong and let them see that they need you? Lord, if there's others who might, might be looking for a church, Lord, let them see that wherever they land, Lord, that they would get plugged in and serve and be part of the work of the ministry to perfect the body of Christ to do what you've called us to do. I thank you, Father. Lord, I just thank you that our club is your club. And, Lord, we want to see more people than ever come to the kingdom of God. That's our, that's our commitment and our goal. Everybody say a great big amen to that. Come on, let's worship together. Thank you so much for joining us today, and we hope you'll tune in next time. If you want more information about Praise Family Church, or if you think you might like to visit us sometimes, you can find out a lot of information at praisefamily.church. Maybe you'd like to partner with us to make these broadcasts possible. You can text the word GIVING to 31. 3131, or you can mail an offering to the address you see on the screen. But whatever you do, we want to continue to be a blessing to you. We want to be a help to you. And we want to let you see that God has got great things in store for you. And he has a plan for your life. We hope you'll continue to tune in and you'll be a part as Praise Family Church continues to tell the good news around the world.